This conference will now be recorded. Chairman. Morning. Good morning, Director Gray. Uh, Chairman Deere, we do have uh, a quorum established. We do have uh, both yourself as well as Director Williams virtually. So we have our two, two members of the committee. Director Gloria Gray is also aboard, so we do have our alternate. And we have Director Houston here on site. And Director Alvarez is on site, but he'll be joining the meeting shortly. Okay. Put it in the microwave. I just started the, they just started the meeting. Here's your coffee, though. You want that? Yeah. I'll just read this in the microwave. Yeah, thanks. So where do we go from here? As chair, if you're ready to call the meeting to order, we are ready here on site. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. There's no surprises to the entire committee, so we have a quorum. Um, public comment. Uh, DJ, take that over that, please. Yes, Chairman Deere. It's my understanding we do not have anybody uh, attending virtually uh, that has submitted a public comment. And we have not received any electronically via email or through our Acela program. So no public comment. Is the presentation at this time ready? Yes, it is, Chairman Deere. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you very much to our finance team as they continue to bring these presentations uh, to our committee for our community uh, banking program. And today we do have a presentation from Malaga Bank. Uh, the presentation uh, is included in the materials that have been sent to you, but I'll hand it off to Margaret Mosia, our Executive Manager of Finance, to introduce the item. Good afternoon. Well, actually, I guess it's still good morning to you. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity again once to, again, to share about our small and community bank program. We're proud to have Malaga Bank here to present, and I'll turn it over to Sasha in just a moment. Uh, but just as a reminder to you, um, on an annual basis, we do look at our policies. We did uh, recently update our policy in January of 2021 um, as it relates to the Small and Community Bank Program. And uh, more notably, it, it was to uh, make sure that we uh, and continue to provide a uh, presence, if you will, to our community banks to participate into this program. Uh, we did look to the requirements of the program and to make sure that Malaga Bank uh, meets all those requirements. And so we are happy after this presentation to continue to work with them to extend, if you will, um, an opportunity to uh, invest with them. And with that, I'll turn it over to Sasha to provide her uh, update as it relates to the um, Malaga's efforts in the community, as well as uh, just some of the other requirements that we asked them to present. And with that, Sasha, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, can good you morning. hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Um, so I'm the Senior Vice President and Business Development Officer of Malaga Bank. It's my pleasure to be with you here this morning to tell you a little bit about our institution. Um, if I could have the next slide, please. So here we have the, the numbers bit of my presentation. Malaga Bank is just under $1.4 billion in total assets, $941 million in deposits, $1.37 billion in loans, and a 21.9% total risk-based capital ratio. We have five full-service branches and we have one loan center. Um, and that's that, in a nutshell, is who we are. <laughs> Next slide, please. This is just a slide that shows you some of the accolades that we received from our industry. Um, we've received for the 54th consecutive quarter, the Bauer Financial Top Five Star Rating. We're very proud of the fact that we've had 54 quarters on this prestigious list. Um, Bauer Financial is one of the nation's leading independent bank rating and research firms. And then in this, just this past May, we were once again awarded the annual Reader's Choice South Bay's Best Bank from the Daily Breeze. This one speaks um, to me personally just because that's what our 
our uh, customers want to say for us, and that's what we'll hear for is for our customers. So we received that uh, award five years consecutively, and we've received it six times overall. We had a gap there around 2016. And the next slide, please. So this is just um, some some of the community work that we've been doing. We were happy for our 35th anniversary. Nope, oh, yep, that one. For our 35th anniversary, um, we had a $5,000 community celebration sweepstakes where um, customers were able to vote for their non their favorite nonprofit. We had four winners, and each winner received $250. And the nonprofit they selected received $1,000 each. And so the winners for that this year were the St. Francis Episcopal Church in Palos Verdes, the Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach, the Center for Learning Unlimited in Torrance, and the Holy Trinity Church in San Pedro. Um, we also helped out at the Rolling Hills Estates. The city of Rolling Hills Estates had a drive through ice cream social um during the pandemic and we were able to participate by giving each family a valga bank backpack that we were able to hand out to them as they drove through for the uh, ice cream social in addition to their ice cream and you can see the kids with some of the cinch backpacks over there in one of those pictures they're kind of big for them but that's okay next slide please This is pictures of our um, work with the Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach. Each year we hold what we call the Pink Out Day or Cancer Awareness Week. And it's where we have a week of donations accepted from our customers as well as from our employees. And all of those donations are gonna go to the Cancer Support Community Redondo Beach. And we in turn match those donations up to a certain amount of money. This year we were able to give them, well, sorry, last year we were able to give them $4,356.75. And we're happy to do that with them. We're going to do that again this year in October. So if you're in the area and want to stop by a branch um, the first week of October, please do so and contribute to this great cause. And our next slide. Here's another one that we do um, consistently throughout the years. We do a toy drive um, collection for the Toys for Troops Kids with Torrance Kiwanis Club. We join with them and collect um, toys and stuffed animals and puzzles and games and whatnot for um, children of the troops who are um, away serving our country. So that's something that we like to do. And the favorite part of that one is getting to take it down to the uh, Air Force Base and distribute those to them. And then we also hosted for the South Bay Rotary Clubs who joined up to um, donate to the United States Marines at Camp Pendleton. And we donated all sorts of needy things for them, the big clothing for babies, um, fruits and vegetables, baby furniture, uh, toys, gift cards. We all delivered that to the Camp Pendleton Marines and their families. And again, that was in conjunction with the South Bay Rotary Clubs and um, one of our branches was the collection place for those items. Next slide, please. I will spare you going through this all specifically because you can read it as you see in your packets. Um, but this is just a sampling of some of the community outreach that we do at Malaga Bank. Um, many of our branch managers are also on boards and deal with the community on a regular basis. So this just shows you what our president and CEO and our CFO participate in, as well as myself um, and our other business development officer. As you can see, she's pretty busy. I'm not sure where she finds the time to do everything, but she manages to do so. Uh, next slide. This is just representing our CRA rating, which is satisfactory for the OCC. This was as of April of this year. Um, so we can provide you with that report. In fact, I think I did provide that report to um, Margaret and Marianne. So you have that available if you'd like to see that. And then our last slide, we can just leave up for a little bit. This shows you um, loans that we have made by your divisions. 
according to zip codes and division, um, those are the outstanding loans that we have in place um, for each of those zip codes, um, along with the total per division. So if you have any questions about that, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Okay, so there are no questions. That concludes my presentation. Um, I'm happy as always to be here this year. It's always fun to be able to showcase what Malaga Bank does for the community and for um, the public. So if there aren't any other questions, I will close my presentation. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Margaret, also. We're now on uh, the next agenda item, which is item five, action calendar, approval minutes. So anything we should note about those? Before we yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman Jim. I did want to point out, we do have uh, uh, several items before you when it comes to the approval of the minutes. You can see that we have our June 9th engineering and operations committee meeting, uh, as well as it was also, uh, Notice as a special board meeting. We have our June 10th special board meeting, and we have a June 14th special board meeting as well. So we have three sets of minutes. We did pull uh, two sets of meetings that, that uh, were held uh, subsequent to June 14th. And the reason for that, our admin team has wor been working to locate some Spanish translation services. I'm pleased to note that we do have those services uh, and it's relatively low cost of about $55 per hour. So we'll be submitting those minutes in a future meeting, uh, but we want to bring these forward uh, as soon as possible. So those are the options that are included within 5A. Director Williams, do you agree we should send these on? I would uh, concur, yes. All right. There's no other comments from directors or staff. We'll, we'll spend the minutes on for approval. Let's go on to item B. And Chairman Deere, as this is a virtual hybrid meeting, if we could do a roll call vote, uh, just so it's noted in here. I know that there are only two members of the committee, but just for for the purpose of uh, managing the meeting. You want to call a roll? Happy to do so. Uh, Chairman Deere? Yes. And Director Williams? Here. And for the record, it's unanimous. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll go on to item on 5 of B, the fiscal uh, year 21-22 community outreach event. This is a sponsorship uh, for the El Camino Chamber of Commerce Main Street Car Show events, amount of $1,000. Um, anything we should know about this, other than the fact it's probably late, so that's why it's here. Chairman Deere, I think the, the most important thing to, to note here is that uh, per our uh, district policy, uh, the event must meet one of the following criteria. It's noted it there in the board memo. It must provide mm -hmm. a speaking opportunity for a district representative uh, or a district booth or table to distribute district information or advertisement pr promoting district awareness. It's important to note that this event does provide an opportunity for all three of those uh, for the sponsorship of $1,000. Uh, as such, and per the direction of uh, Director Houston, it is recommended that the board approve the sponsorship requested by Director Houston for El Segundo Chamber of Commerce 2020, excuse me, 2021 Main Street Car Show event to be held on Saturday, August 21st, 2021, in the amount of $1,000. All right, uh, Thomas, before we ask for roll call, I'll please call the roll. President Harold Williams? Yes. Chairman Deere? Yes. And that motion passes, and the recommendation will be passed on to the board. Item C, uh, regular special board meeting location. Yes, thank you, 
Chairman Deere. As you recall, this is an item that was brought forth uh, at a previous meeting at the direction of Director Alvarez. Uh, the request was to be made that we allow for a future committee and board meetings and special board meetings to take place on out of sight locations uh, away from the Donald L. Deere building. Uh, in order to do this and in order for this uh, action to take place, it is required that the West Basin Board of Directors amend the uh, administrative code uh, to allow for this uh, in order to have a regular meeting off site. As such, we have asked our legal counsel to draft resolution number 0721-1135, a resolution, a resolution of the Board of Directors of West Basin Municipal Water District amending resolution number 0116-1024, uh, administrative code as it relates to regular and special board meetings. It was requested uh, again by Director Alvarez, uh, but per the direction of the West Basin Board of Directors, we are bringing it back here to uh, the uh, admin uh, for discussion and potential action. Unfortunately, Director Alvarez isn't here. Is he here well, yet? Uh, yes, Director Alvarez is here on site. Oh, great. Well. Uh, why do we need this? Can't hear you. Can't hear. Take your mask off. Take my mask off. That's your required by. I thought the new regulations are indoors. We have to have the mask on. If you're not talking, okay. if you're talking, you can take it off. All right. Uh, I got special dispensation from the board president. Um, <laughs> and, um, the uh, the reason that uh, this is, item uh, is <clears throat> something that we should consider and adopt, it basically is a small change to our administrative code, but it provides flexibility for the location of uh, board meetings without having to call a special board meeting when the board meeting will be held outside of the Don Deere building. So that if we ever see at the Etsy Little facility or anywhere else within the district boundary, that's consistent um, with the Brown Act and uh, state regulations, uh, we would be able to do so and have a regular board meeting as such, and it would just have to be noticed as such. So if we wanted to meet with the city council, for example, it wouldn't have to be a special board meeting, it could be a regular board meeting uh, and do it at the city that we're meeting with. Or if we just needed to meet somewhere else for uh, convenience of stakeholders, we could do so without calling a special board meeting. That's all this, this does is provide us that flexibility consistent with um, the uh, state uh, laws and regulations. Well, I'm inclined to think a special board meeting, there's nothing wrong with a special board meeting, but I, I, I will support this request of yours, so busy. Thank you. Uh, Harold, how do you feel about it? I support it. You, you, you're not asking us to spend any more money, and it sounds like we might save some money. But yes, I would support this. Okay. Anything else? Staff, do you have any input? Staff has no input. However, uh, an action by the uh, committee is required, and this would, of course, need to be taken to the full board to adopt the resolution that's incorporated within the board memo. My support. Yeah. Okay. Your dear. Oh, Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Go ahead, Director Group. I have a question. May I ask a question? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, who determines where the board meeting will be? Is this just if we need, I mean, who makes that determination where the board meeting will be? If, if I may, if I may, Chair, perhaps um, this is Martin Kozanowicz uh, with the General Counsel, perhaps um, an addition of language that said that that determination would be made at, by the board at a prior meeting. 
Now, to, you're saying to add language that says the board will make the decision where the board meeting will be, correct? Right. If, if there's a proposal to change the meeting to a different place, the board would need to approve that at a prior meeting. Yes. The majority of the board would have to make that decision. Okay. I think that's important to have that there because this allows us to have board meetings in a place, which is, I think, a great idea. But the determination of where the board meeting should be held, I think it's, it has to be done by the board itself, the majority of the board. Thank you. That's a good comment. Otherwise, it would be an arbitrary decision based on, on one person, either a general manager or a board member. So I, I like your suggestion. Can we add those words to the resolution here? We will make sure that uh, those words will be added before it moves on, if it moves on to the to the whole board for for adoption. Okay. Nancy, is that okay with you? I well, I have an additional comment. If that's the case, I think for convenience sake, it, in addition to that, it should be that the board president um, should also be able to direct that because there may be a situation that arises between a board meeting and the next board meeting where we would want to have the board meeting outside of the Don Deere facility and that the board president, um, which directs what's supposed to be on the agenda, et cetera, should also have that option uh, just to have more flexibility. Okay, Harold, how do you feel about that? I'm good with that. Okay, me too. All right, we'll, we'll make sure the language reflects that if that's the wish of the committee. Okay, I, 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 Scott has a question. Scott, sorry, can I ask you a quick question? I guess so. What would be the verbiage that uh, will be added, Martin? Uh, thank sorry, you, but... Director. Uh, basically, it would be. Um, the um, any uh, any decision to hold a meeting um, at a um, place other than the district headquarters uh, shall be made by the board at a prior meeting or by the president of the board um, we can add with concurrence of general manager or just by the president of the board prior at least 72 hours prior to the date of the meeting so obviously we need to post it in accordance with the Brown Act. Okay, thank you. Uh, there are, you? I have another question. That's kind of conflicting language you said either by the board president or the board. So who makes the decision? I thought Director Alvarez is saying if an emergency comes up and the board president could make that decision, but but so it's conflicting me either or so who does it but if a dip, if an emergency situation comes up and the board president makes it but if the board makes it in a prior meeting and an emergency comes up then the board president makes it so it's a little confusing to me what you just said uh, Larry, you, didn't, you didn't come over very clearly uh, no you just said either by the board majority or the board president. So what does that mean? Who makes that decision? Well, I think that the language would simply permit the board at a, at a meeting to say, let's have the next meeting in this location. And if the majority of you agree, you make that vote, and, and, and the next meeting, regular meeting, will be held at a given location. The president, what was being suggested, is that the president of the board can also do that after the last meeting of the board. In other words, in between the time the board meets and the time the new meeting comes up, if there's some reason that is significant enough for the president of the board to say, you know what, our next meeting should be over there, uh, what is being proposed is that he has the power to do that. Then I think you need to put some language there that says why the board president would make that decision, would override the board decision, majority of the board. I think there needs to be some language that says why the board president would override that. Well, I don't think I don't think an override is being proposed. I think what's yeah. being proposed is that um, let's say board doesn't take any action and the next meeting is scheduled to be held at the headquarters next fourth uh, Monday of the month. 
something comes up in between that meeting and the meeting that's that's going to be held and the president makes a decision you know what let's hold the next meeting uh somewhere else at some other location within the district that that is what i understood the amendment to to be to be proposed not that a president once the board decides to have a meeting at a different location that the president can override that oh, that's correct i believe you're correct yes Uh, well, uh, well, that's that's kind of like a perfect scenario, but my understanding is if a member of the board would like to have the meetings, for example, if Director Houston wants to have it in Culver City and the board agrees, then the board president can override that decision. No. I mean, that's, no. Not the, not the that is not what's being what the amendment uh, intended, and and the language will not reflect that. No. So it's it's just that if there's a if the board meeting is at the regular scheduled place, and if the board president decides that it should be at another place, the board president can do that. Is that what you're saying? That is correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, I I don't think that's very clear, but if that's what you're proposing, okay. You'll, you'll have an opportunity to look at the language when it's before you at a board meeting, and if there's anything that needs explanation or refinement, we can do that. Thank you. And That's Chairman, if, if I could see okay. a clarification. Uh, in the draft resolution uh, that's before you, it says that the board shall hold regular meetings on the fourth Monday of each month at a time designated by the board at one of the following notice locations uh, is there any desire to identify the primary location and then alternative opportunities or would you prefer to have it uh, as written within the draft i prefer to have it as a headquarters that's the as a primary look primary location Any, unless, any problem with it? unless directed by the board or the board president as the discussion has just taken place is that correct yes perfect thank you very much so we're we're, we're leaving only only the headquarters as the as the location or we're leaving them both in no I, I, that would be the uh primary or kind of default location and then it should have the, the second tier should be by direction of the board or the board president. Okay. So we're going to remove the Edward C. Little water recycling facility from the list and simply have the headquarters only. There's no need for it to be on the list. You're right. I'm going to do that. Okay. Uh, Scott, do you have a question? Yeah, I have a question. I really I don't understand why we even need to do that. I think it's fine the way it was written. So I don't think you need to say a primary location or a secondary. I think it's fine the way it's written. I think it's fine the way we changed it. <laughs> okay. okay. Any else? So when when will the board vote on this? Is this going to be before the board for action on this coming Tuesday, the uh, 26th? I believe so. Okay. And Chairman Deere, that, that was the point of the clarification because as we as we move forward with the scheduling of our meetings, uh, for the purpose of of uh, allowing the admin team to get our agendas up in a timely manner, meeting all of the requirements within the Brown Act, uh, we would need to know kind of that process. If it's going to require a board action in order to move it, or a request, or to to return to the board president to move it to an offsite location. We just need to know kind of what our typical process would be. And so with that, uh, we can massage the resolution that we'll be bringing back to the full board. We can work with Martin on that. And then of course, at the full board, we can take additional feedback from the board as far as how we wanna finalize that resolution. But, but staff would need that clarification ultimately. Okay, there's, uh, uh, let's call a roll on this uh, resolution. President Williams? Yes. 
Chairman Deere? Yes. And it's, it's passed onto the board. Thank you very much, everyone, for your participation in this. Uh, item D, sponsorships. Thank you. Uh, this item is brought back to you uh, for you for discussion and for action on consideration of the district membership and sponsorships for fiscal year 2021-2022. Uh, as you can see within table A, I'm missing a large portion of, of this packet. Uh, as you can see in the materials before you, uh, you should have a complete list of the memberships <coughs> as well as the sponsorships uh, that were approved within the fiscal year budget. Uh, this item has come back before the committee as well as the full board. Uh, for additional discussion and, and comments as far as the uh, direction from the board to reduce or to maintain our current memberships and sponsorships. Uh, as discussed at a previous meeting, uh, we are beginning to get invoices uh, for both our memberships and our sponsorships. Uh, we are receiving requests from organizations that are moving forward with their annual or uh, biannual uh, conference schedules. And as such, uh, staff does uh, have a staff recommendation that the board approve the list of proposed memberships and sponsorships for, for fiscal year 2021-22. Uh, and I would say aside from that recommendation, uh, if, if of course uh, the committee and the board have alternative direction for, the, for staff, uh, if we could do so by the conclusion of this month, it'll allow us to begin paying some of the invoices that we've already received. Okay. Um, any comments from my colleagues? I I would recommend that this list goes to the to the um, full board. I agree. Can we have and, a and that and that we use that time on at our next meeting to really go through this because unless. Uh, Mr. Chair, that you're prepared to uh, make a, del a deletion to this list, a deletion from this list. Uh, I, I would, I'm ready to do that. But um, if not, it's, I think we should go on to the uh, full board to start chopping away at this. I, uh, I concur. Uh, and uh, so we'll ask for a roll call from uh, our general manager on this one. Chair Deer, would you uh, consider? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Cons consider some comments before uh, voting on this item. Of course. Go ahead. Okay. I would just um, like to talk a little bit about the item because it was discussed, and I, I think that uh, at the workshop one of the budget workshops the first budget workshop where the budget was actually discussed and um, <clears throat> then it was kind of dropped and it got back in the budget without any uh, further discussion and adopted um, with I think the understanding that it would be brought back for consideration and I would just like to at least put for the board's consideration uh, what I think are the key items here and where I think some savings uh, can be done um, and we can have further discussion at the board meeting, as uh, President Williams has indicated when this is considered at the at the formal board meeting next week. But I, I would think that uh, if we're going through this list, that if you look through the list, basically all of the memberships at the top, uh, the participation in the Chambers of Commerce, and the memberships in the first three uh, organizations at the bottom of the list uh, <clears throat> ending with the LA Business uh, Federation BISFED would be the ones that are most beneficial and really uh, serve the district. The rest of the uh, uh, memberships that are shown there um, are not all that you know everything's beneficial uh, um, you can always make a case for that but they're not critical they do cost us an awful lot of money 
uh, there would be uh, over $200,000 or approximately $200,000 worth of savings if we um, did not uh, support those memberships. And uh, that money can be redirected to the uh, <clears throat> um, water conservation program is one of the areas that I think uh, <clears throat> we had talked about uh, adding additional money and we never did was in the turf replacement program. And the turf replacement program uh, is a program that would give us the maximum bang for our dollars in really reducing our water usage uh, within the district boundaries. And we can do a turf replacement program that can be targeted to actually help uh, and uh, be more focused on uh, disadvantaged community members um, <clears throat> where a lot of this would go a long ways. Also in the uh, community outreach, which is the second list that's uh, on uh, before it's for consideration or for review, is um, one that uh, adds up to another $93,000. And I would argue that we don't need to do that. And for one example is, um, earlier I had said we would support the memberships and for example uh, the Association of California Water Agencies that membership is $30,500. Uh, then if we do the outreach which is in the second list uh, we're adding another $18,750 and I'm not quite sure that we need that. We are members, board members can attend uh, all of the aqua meetings, uh, have full representation um, and the uh, community outreach component of that is a uh, additional cost that uh, is not necessary. And I think at the end of the day, when you're looking at the benefits uh, and trying to really manage the dollars, are we better spent doing that or are we better spend redirecting that money to water conservation? So that's just food for thought. We can have a further discussion on uh, Monday at the board meeting on this. Thank you very okay. much. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, I, I do have some questions. This is Director Gray. Uh, yes, Gloria. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I was trying to follow Director Gavin's yeah, <clears throat> comments on both items or both categories. Uh, I know that the, the membership list, uh, there, there, has to have been a purpose for us becoming a member of all these agencies. So did staff ever provide us uh, why we're why it's important that we do or so that we can make a decision as to whether or not it is important to the agency why we're a member of these and these are professional organizations. So uh, I would like staff to look at especially some of the larger ones you know, you look it off or you look at um, just the first top five or 10, that's where most of the money is allocated. And then when you come down, you do see others where there's forty, fifty thousand dollars the larger amounts. And then I have a question about, I see under Chambers of the Association, and because we have a list of individual chambers, cities, does that chamber, South Bay Association, does that involve all the other South Bay chambers that are maybe listed here? So I'd like to get some information and maybe staff has done this. I don't know, I apologize if you have, but to give some idea as to why it's important that West State um, have to continue to be a member of these organizations, these major ones, this major expenditure that you see on this list. And then with the community outreach fund, uh, the question is, do they submit a request for sponsorship when uh, the event comes up, or is this just something we just automatically do without board approval? Yes, so thank you, Director Gray. Uh, in relation to the materials identifying each organization and the value and, and West Basin's involvement, uh, I do believe that a matrix was sent out uh, yes. to the entire board, kind of identifying what what are the organizations and, and really w what we do with them. Uh, in terms of the list itself and the, the top portion of the list, it's very important to note that uh, the list is in alphabetical order and really isn't designed to 
to identify which are the most important or, or which are the, are the least important. Uh, and thirdly, just to answer the question related to the South Bay Chamber, uh, yes, it, it, we see this uh, a lot of times with different business organizations. A lot of times you have smaller cities focused in on, on the specific uh, city organizations, and then they have larger umbrella chambers. And this, of course, is one of those. The South Bay Chamber includes large portions of all of the different chambers. Uh, it's one organization, and, but they have more of a, uh, a regional perspective rather than the individual specific city uh, direction. Uh, as far as the, the uh, sponsorship programs go, you know, when, when staff receives uh, updates on the different conferences, we obviously utilize the, the fiscal year budget to identify uh, potential opportunities to uh, to sponsor different conferences. So we're always looking at, as soon as we get the, the notification of a conference, we look at the budget and then we try to find the best opportunity for West Basin within that budget. We don't always spend the maximum amount, but there, these dollar figures are based off of historical uh, uh, outreach and, and sponsorship of those conferences. So for instance, if you're at a an aqua conference sometimes they'll have a breakfast sponsor sometimes they'll have an individual uh, social uh, event or a networking event so there are different opportunities to uh, to uh, sponsor a specific conference it could even be just a page within the uh, the conference materials so so the, the description there with the sponsorship that just allows for the amount of money that we're uh, authorized to spend on those sponsorships, but then we work within each of those organizations. And as I mentioned, a handful of conferences are already being scheduled, uh, will be taking place in August and September, October and November. And as we're uh, receiving requests to, to uh, sponsor or, or the materials that identify sponsorship opportunities, staff is just waiting to, to get the determination of the board as to when we should apply these dollars and seek those opportunities because they do go quickly. I hope that answers all of your questions. Yes, and thank you, Adrian. Can you send me that matrix again regarding the memberships and so forth? Will do. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, uh, Director Williams, shall we uh, have a roll call on this item? Uh, the roll call will be to, uh, to pass this recommendation item, to, the, to the final to the board for for a vote on on uh, what's going to be deleted or what's going forward. Whatever they want to, I think want we, to do. We've we've been here before, and I think this would be like a, maybe the third time that we tried to whittle this list down and. It comes down to uh, same old thing. Well, nobody <laughs> wants to be the bad. Nobody really has a particular organization they want to get get to. But the, list, the motion today would be to approve the proposed membership list, and then the board can do what it wants at the full board meeting. That that okay. was my that was my recommendation, and I and I would stick to that. Okay, uh, let's call a roll, EJ. President Williams? Yes. Chairman Deer? Yes, and uh, the recommendations pass on to the full board. Director Gray, did you have a question? No, I'm fine. Thank you very much, Director Deer. Thank you. Okay, we're on item six of our agenda today the information calendar. Return to the office update, the oral report. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman Deer. And I'll be providing this oral update today. Uh, but I did want to point out uh, that we do have our manager of human resources uh, here on the, in the meeting uh, to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, first, I wanted to note that despite a rise in COVID cases across the nation and the state of California due primarily to the variant, the governor's office and Cal OSHA have not amended their COVID protocols since our last FNA committee uh, in the COVID update on June 23rd, 2021. I do want to note that on July 6th, as notified to the board, uh, West Basin Management did initiate a reintegration of West Basin staff back into the office 
on a term of one day per week. However, uh, we do have several staff members that have volunteered uh, who or who are actively uh, coming into the office uh, far more than uh, one day per week. Uh, as we track this and we track all staff coming in, uh, we have specific protocols for, for staff when they when they arrive to the office. So we're always aware of how many staff members that we have here. And we have approximately 38% of employees reporting on any given day, but we're as high as 54% of our employees on our highest days. It is also important to note that uh, though no change has been made by the governor's office or Cal OSHA, uh, it's worth noting that the Los Angeles County Public Health Department has issued a mask mandate for indoor public spaces regardless of vaccination status effective at midnight uh, Saturday, July 17th of 2021. Uh, worth noting and to give great credit to Michelle Green, her staff and her department, uh, West Basin had been implementing a mask mandate uh, for moving through and around the office and in public spaces uh, as part of our uh, very specific re-entry protocols and safety measures. Our human resources department has been very active in communicating with staff. Uh, the protocols and safety measures were emailed out to every member of the West Basin team. And of course, when we receive the update from the Department of uh, Public Health, uh, we provided an update to all staff. So I'm very excited to note uh, that, that we are back in the office. Uh, staff has been uh, doing a great job of maintaining a uh, responsible and respectful approach to everybody's safe and uh, healthy work environment. Uh, so that has been a great plus. And then lastly, I'd like to note that our human resources department has conducted a survey of staff regarding their vac vaccination status in compliance with Cal OSHA mandates, which indicates that the employers are allowed to accept employee self attestations or certification as to their vaccination status rather than require the employers to obtain and retain copies of employees' vaccination and medical records. 84% uh, of West Base employees did respond to that survey. And of those who responded, it has been determined that 78% of employees are fully vaccinated out of the 45 employees who received the survey. So that would complete our oral report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. And of course, we have Michelle Green on the uh, line if if she if you have any questions of hers. All right, board members, questions. Gloria. No, I'm good. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, press on. Thank you very much. Good report. Appreciate it. All your involvement. Uh, item six B monthly financial report. This is Margaret's big show here. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Deer. And of course, uh, our monthly financial report, uh, we do have uh, Margaret on the line here, but I do see that uh, Marianne Rexroad, our manager of finance, has joined us as well, and she'll be giving this report. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, EJ. Good afternoon, directors. Um, yes, I'll be taking this item um, this afternoon. I'm happy to do so. Uh, beginning on page 34 is your monthly financial reports. Um, each month, as you know, staff submits various reports, which includes your monthly demands, as well as cash investments, your water sales, as well as director's conference expense reports and the executive management and staff travel report. If I could ask you to move down to the beginning of page 36, which will start off with your monthly demands. To begin on page 36 through page 42 are all the uh, expenses that were paid during the month of June. This covers all the operating needs of the district. Um, for the month of June, we expended about $19.7 million, which is shown on page 42. One thing I just wanted to point out, um, close to the midway of the page there on page 42, you'll see that we had a payment to U.S. Bank Corporate Trust. This was for $4.9, almost $5 million. This was in relation to the defeasance of the 2011 A's or the refunding of the 2011 A's and 2011 B's as well as the commercial paper program. Um, just as a comparison, last month we had expended about 14.4 million. So the increase from month to month is primarily due to the fact that we paid for these bonds in the month of June. 
and I'll pause there to see if there's any questions before I move on. Okay, moving on to your next report. This is item 6BB, which is your cash and invest investment report. This report is as of June 30th, 2021. You'll see at the very top left-hand corner there, our total market value at June 30th was just under $97 million. In that middle of the report, you'll see the security types of the investments that West Basin had at June 30th. And you'll see that our largest portion of our security types happens to be in money market funds, which includes your local agency investment fund. That's a very liquid fund. Um, second to that is what we have invested in our US treasuries. And moving down to the next page, these are the graphs that give you the both the credit quality of our portfolio at June 30th, as well as the maturity distribution. Again, you can see from that top graph, the district invests in very high quality investments, AAA and, and, and AA investments as well. That chart or that line to the right under NA, that's primarily your LAFE account, which is um, not a rated investment. And then moving down to the maturity distribution, again, you can see that first line of about 38 million, again, those are your on-demand dollars, which primarily include your LIFE account. And then you'll see that we have the investments sort of laddered throughout the next year to four years out. The following page is a report that shows the transactions for the month of June. We had two investments that did mature and you could see from the top part of the page there under the buys that we reinvested those dollars into various securities, including corporate notes, as well as some US treasuries. And the, the remainder of the report that starts on page 46, that goes down to page 49, is all the detail of the specific, the particular investments that we had at June 30th. And these are broken down by security type. It gives you the maturity date of each investment, as well as the par value, the market value, um, as well as the rating as of June 30th from each of the credit rating agencies that we use, both S&P and Moody's. With that, I, I will pause to see if there's any questions before moving on. No questions, thank you. Okay, so your, your next report is your monthly water sales for the month of June. And I'm sure you're all familiar with this. So at the very top of that page is your imported retail sales. So now we have the full year in front of us. So we do compare ourselves for the last, the current fiscal year to the last fiscal year. And you can see that we did come slightly under last fiscal year, about 1700 acre feet, as well as for the month of June. However, on the bright side, we did better than what we budgeted. We had a budget of 103,000 for the fiscal year. And we did beat that just slightly about almost a thousand acre feet above budget, so about 1%. And then moving down to your imported barrier sales. Again, we had, uh, we compare ourselves to last fiscal year. We had about 6,900 acre feet last fiscal year. Uh, we didn't quite make last fiscal year, but we did hit our budget. And in particular, just to give you a little detail, for the Dominguez Gap, we sold about 30, almost 3,600 acre feet of that 51 you see there on that 2021 line. And then the remainder of that was to the West Coast Barrier of about 1,550 acre feet. And then moving to the next page, at the very top, we have our recycled water sales. And I'll try to provide a little bit more color on this. So for the month of June, you could see that we didn't quite make what we, we didn't quite equal what we had last year, about 250 acre feet below last fiscal year for the month of June, um, and about 450 acre feet as compared to last fiscal year. Um, real close, but primarily the difference was in our barrier sales. And then moving down compared to the budget, we uh, again, we didn't quite make our budget. We had actual sales of 34,452 for the year with a budget of 36. Um, we did have sales to our refineries that actually exceeded what we had budgeted and to our Title 22 customers 
Um, the reason we did not uh, meet our budget is we were under on our, our sales to the barrier. And I think you heard at the ENO meeting, we did have some poor water quality that was supplied from Hyperion during the month of June and throughout the year. So that did attribute to the reason for our sales being lower than we anticipated. And the very bottom of that page, you'll see your sales to the barrier, I'm sorry, to the brewer, desalter. And for the month of June, um, we did not have any sales and we finished up the year with 362 acre feet. Um, a little bit better than last year at 124, but we quite we didn't quite make budget on this either. And I'll just pause there again to see if there's any questions um, on any particular sales. Not. All right, your final report are your director's conference and travel expense. And you can see on this report, this is through June. Um, we finished off the year with about just under $9,000 in expenses, and that is compared to a budget of about $75,000. So we were quite under budget for this fiscal year. The next page shows the executive management and the staff travel expense. Again, we, we spent about $19,500 for the year, well below budget of $150,000. So with that, I'm... I'm We'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions? Well, thank you very much. Your excellent report as usual. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, before we decide, I would like to make a request. Uh, I would like to get copies of the receipts for the following warrants. Uh, warrant number 86002. 86008 Nine seven eighty six one three four eighty six one three six eighty six one three nine and eighty six one four two. Thank you. Okay, would you have copies of those for the for the various board members? Mm. I can pull those the particular payments and I will forward on to board services. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, I have a question on one of these. Um, Gloria, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, there's, I'm trying to move forward. It says something about a garnishment. Uh, franchise tax board reimbursement for that 8687. What's that for? Um, I will answer that question. Um, from time to time, the district will receive a request from the Franchise Tax Board on um, uh, employee garnishments, and so we did receive one. Um, we um, uh, we did uh, deduct it from the employee, and then we um, then forwarded it over to the Franchise Tax Board. And then it was reimbursed to the district. Is that what you're saying? It, it will go through the uh, payroll as a payroll deduction. Then there was the central base in 86018, retiring health, and that's 32,000. That Certainly, I can answer that one as well. Uh, so that one there is, as uh, some of you may know, um, when we were a shared dist uh, shared staff between two district, uh, we did uh, split the cost for the retirees. Um, at the time of uh, separation from the two districts, uh, it was agreed upon that we would still pay for 50% of the retirees at that time. Um, so they do uh, provide that bill to us on an annual basis. It would include uh, pre premiums and out-of-pockets, and so that was uh, the amount that we received at that time. So, Margaret, how long is that agreement going to last? Is that employees that went to center base that were part of the two? Agencies together. Correct. And so, you know, um, suffice it to say that will last as long as the in individuals do. So, 
Um, so uh, as the uh, as uh, those change, uh, we will see. Um, you know, as um, circumstances changes, we will no longer have to pay those bills. But at this time, uh, while they're still alive and have those bills, we will then see those uh, payments that we will need to make. So these are retirees, these are not active in Correct. Court. They were only retirees at the time that we separated. There, so if there's any retirees that come from Central Basin after July 1, 2006 to mm -hmm. Central Basin or to West Basin, we're not responsible for each other's, we're only responsible for those that were retirees at the time of separation. Do you know how many, sorry about the noise in the house, uh, do you know how many employees that may represent um, I believe it represents, uh, it was eight, I believe we're now at seven. Okay, thank you, Margaret. Thank you. You're very, you're very welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Director Williams. Harold. Um, uh, concerning uh, Director Alvarez's uh, a request, now, it's my understanding that that kind of request would, would also be shared with the uh, rest of the board. Is that correct? I think it's been agreed to, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can't micromanage by ourselves. We've got to do it as a group. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Chairman Jerry, that concludes the information calendar. Thank you very much. If, there, if there's no objection, I will call roll on uh, receiving the following information calendar. President Williams? Say yes, Earl. Yes. And Chairman Deere? Yes. Okay. Uh, there's no closed session, that's correct? Correct. Correct. Uh, director's comments. We'll start with the director Williams. Any comment? No, thank you. And in order of attendance, uh, Director Houston, any comment? Uh, no, thank you. Uh, director Alvarez, comment? I, I have a uh, request I would like to uh, consider for uh, the uh, next board meeting. Uh, and uh, as Everyone, I think, is aware um, we are seeing an increased incident of uh, <clears throat> COVID uh, spreading amongst the unvaccinated population and increases in uh, hospital admittances as a consequence. And it's almost 100%, not quite, but almost 100% unvaccinated uh, folks. Um, and it's pretty proven uh, fact that the vaccine uh, will mitigate this and the, ultimately the way to control the COVID uh, <clears throat> uh, pandemic is through the vaccination process. Uh, quite a few uh, organizations and agencies are now requiring that all of their employees be uh, <laughs> uh, vaccinated. Uh, the city of Pasadena uh, just uh, took such an action as has the city of San Francisco. I would like to put on the board agenda consideration that we require all of our um, employees to be vaccinated, consistent with all the proper rules and regulations. Thank you. Make sure we'll put that on the agenda for the regular board meeting. Uh, other comments, directors? Yes, it's Director Gray. Director Gray, go ahead. Yeah. I want to thank staff um, for acting general manager and all the staff that's going for their reports. I appreciate the work that they continue to do. Um, in regards to Director Alvarez's request, as part of that, I, I really would like to hear whether or not that's something I know we're going to have to if it's something we can actually mandate. Um, and that will include a big part of the discussion. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Well, this is no further business. Uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you very much, everybody. Chairman Deere, before we conclude the meeting, if I could get clarification, I wasn't quite clear as to whether that item was to be brought before the full board on Monday. Is that correct? 
was that the intent, uh, Desi? Yes. Yes. Other questions? Okay, if there's no further business, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.